We're going to begin mapping shadows by looking at the cube or a rectangular box. For that, we're going to need to make our eye level usually about two-thirds of the way up on the page. This would give us a normal standing height for, for someone. And give myself a vanishing point, two vanishing points for a two-point box, and one vanishing point maybe over here for my one-point box. And I'll begin with my one-point box. So you'll recall that we don't need to use any vanishing points for it the front part of the box or the back of the box really because they're facing us squarely throughout their length and width. I do need the vanishing point though when I want to know how much smaller to make the more distant view, the back of the box. And it's important to put in the hidden lines as well, especially since my whole goal here is to mark a a shadow to map a shadow so I just arbitrarily decide how deep I want the box to be and again I'm going lightly but I need to know what's going on inside the box even though I want it to be a solid it's going to be a solid box and don't forget to cross your corners that gives you a more accurate corner as well and you're constantly practicing your aim and practicing doing deliberate lines now I'll put in the two-point box I'll try to get it maybe in the same, sort of the same. That's another example of uh, something that's important to do. Estimating proportion and scale relative to what's already on the page. That other box. I'm relating the size of this to that other box. I'm really stuck on my tape. Now if I could move my page, I would be moving it to so that this would be more comfortable for me in terms of my my handedness I find it easier to to turn and work on an angle but in there'll be cases where you won't be able to do that like I'm in this situation where I have to keep my head out of the way and I have to make sure that what I'm doing is in the camera's view so I can't do that but whenever you can you can do it and it'll help you could also, if this is your first time doing something like this, you might want to use your ruler because you want things to be as accurate as they can be. So you can make the observations I want you to make. Okay, and then I bring that down and you can check to see that that ends up being correct at the back here. Okay, now one and two point perspective can exist together. You see that everywhere, that things are turned at an angle and they're also facing you in any room. So don't worry about that. The one thing is that they need to be far apart, those two vanishing points. You never use these two points together. That one is just for the things that are facing us squarely. But you can use the other two. And in fact, you can have many sets of two vanishing points, all at different angles. Some might be at 30, 60, some might be at 45 degrees. So that's possible all the time. Now, in choosing my light source, I want something that's going to be about the side of my box here. So there are many ways to go about this. You can either um, set you in a room for example your light source might be in the middle of the room and you don't have a choice that's how it has to be and you have to work with it and that's often what happens is that it's in the middle but in this case I want to have a side shadow so I'm gonna pull that out so that I want the place where the shadow hits the floor to be about the center of the side of that box so I'm gonna make a mark there all I need to know now is where the light is, how high it is. So I'm gonna put it, the higher I put it, the shorter my shadow will be. 
So I'm going to try for something a little high so that I can have, I can get everything I need to get on the page. Now, what I'm going to do is pass this vanishing point through each of the four corners of the box as it sits on the surface. And to know how long to make those lines, they're going to give me the angles and shapes of the shadow on the floor. But to know how long to make them, I then need to use the light source itself. And it will tell me when to cut those off. Okay, so I'll start with one corner and go one corner at a time. So in making this line, what I'm doing is I'm joining this dot to this corner and I keep on going. I don't know where to stop yet because I haven't used the light source itself. It's going to tell me. But this is actually the shadow for this line. Now, in order to know how long to make that shadow, I need to, I need to include that in my thinking. So I'm going to go from this vanishing point through that corner and keep on going. And where it crosses the line that I've just made will tell me that that blue line should stop there. And the length of the shadow for that line is that. I will do the next one. I'll go through this corner and I keep on going because I don't know yet how long to make it. And when I go from this vanishing point through here, which is really the light source, if I go through this, and I go through here, I'm doing phantom lines, we're doing everything I can to get this to be as straight and as accurate as I can make it. I'll go through here and I'll get a point right here. And what I want you to notice, because it's important that you notice this, because we want we're headed toward the same goal not having to rely on mapping all these points, but to just know from observing things around us and from doing many, many of these diagrams that this is actually a straight line because it's the shadow for that. And the way this is drawn is as a straight line. Okay, so that's a straight line. So that's the beginning of my shadow, but I'm not done yet. I've got another side to consider. So I may take this through that point and now I'm going to map through this because I want to know the length of the shadow for this line I have to go through this and that will give me the shadow for that line oops and here's my point right here and what I want you to notice is that this is just like that I could have really just used that point so, it is the shadow for this line. So, and I use the vanishing point to draw that, so I have the vanishing point for that. And we've got one corner left. Now, if a corner becomes inside the box, you don't, you don't work with it. But this is going to be outside the back of the box. So, I'm going to go from this to this corner and it stops there and once again once again I've got a straight line so this is my shadow and if this is a solid box I'm not going to see that other edge it's hidden it's within the box so Now, for the other box, the two-point box, its shadow is going to be a little different because it's at an angle, but the principle is the same. It's going to be a little longer, a little further away. Now, I think it's important to develop a pro process which is comfortable for you. If it's more comfortable to do the light first and then do the 
the shape on the floor, then that's what you would do. But for me, I think I work better this way. And it's kind of a logical, it, it forms a logical way of working to me. Now, what I want you to notice this time is that these pretty much work with this vanishing point. Not exactly, so I'm probably a little off, but they would they work with this vanishing point because that's how I drew this line and this is the shadow for that line this is a shadow for that and this is the shadow for the side of that box now if I go this way can't get too excited or you'll get your lines will go off but you're trying to there's this and you'll notice that I used to draw this, this vanishing point. So again, I can use that vanishing point to draw this line. Because this is the shadow for that hidden side of the box. So the shape of my shadow is here. Now, the darkest side of my box is next to the shadow. And this is my darkest side of the box here. And you mustn't let all of these lines confuse you. Keep your focus. It's another great exercise in keeping your focus on what you're doing at the moment and excluding all the other lines. Now the lights from above, so the top is very light, but this front side could have a little bit of value. It's actually would give be the place for the true color of what it is you're rendering because it's oblique to the light, but it's still in the light. Well, this one isn't, but we want to give contrast to our value planes so we would consider it a middle value even though it's actually in the place where you would have shadow and you're always trying to so that's side lighting for a one point box and a two point box with the light at the side 